Hi guys and welcome back to my video of Sharvis Pond World. Something a bit different this week to the normal style vlogs that we do with the pond. So this week I thought I'd just do a quick video of some of the most essential items that any koi keeper would need. So before we get into the video, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, give me the thumbs up and hit the bell to get the notifications so you know every single time that I post a video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Right, so I've, I've jotted down a bit of a list of some of the most essential items that all key, all key koi keepers, shall I say, should, should need. They're in no really particular order. Some of these will make some perfect gifts with Christmas in a few weeks' time. So the first one I've got jotted down on the list is a water test kit. So probably one of the most fundamental items that any koi keeper is really going to need. So this is the one I use, which is the Colombo test kit, which is in liquid form. You've got all your usual stuff in here to test your nitrates, ammonia, nitrites, pH, KH. All comes with your test tubes as well. Loads of other test kits on the market. You don't have to spend a fortune on these. Of course, you can get the HANA test kits as well, which you do pay a little bit more money for. So whichever way, whichever brand or liquid or electronic kit that you decide to go for, it really is an essential kit to have. I understand not, not everyone really tests their water. Some people just rely on the fish telling them, but if, if that's what you do, then fair enough. But I'd all, I do recommend you do keep one to the side. You don't want to leave it too late. If there is an issue with your water and your fish are telling you there's an issue with the water, and then at least you've got one at hand. You've got, if it happens at night time and the shops are closed, at least you've got one ready. Very, very fundamental. Some people test weekly, some people test weekly, some people test monthly. Again, whichever way you decide to do it, have one. Have one in your filter shed or your garden shed or your house to the side so you know exactly where it is. I've not brought them out of the shed with me, but another one really, of course, is your nets. A great for koi is having a pan net. Again, have it large enough for whatever size koi you've got. A pan net is great for when you're guiding your koi over to your sock net or a bowl. Not really obviously to be scooping out the koi with and then seeing that i think i brought one down as grab it of course to go along with the pan net is a good sock net so you use your pan net you're guiding your koi across the water get them into your sock net a sock net head first into the net grab it the other side you can actually lift it out bowl it or whatever you need to do with the koi so ideal to use and so much easier to use and trying to scoop a koi out in a net you can damage scales you can damage gills you can damage fins stresses the koi out even more when they're flapping about this relieves a lot of that stress helps the koi keeper as well from stop being stressed but another great fundamental piece of equipment to have around so Going along with the with the nets, of course, is a good, decent sized bowl. Some people have these big measuring bowls. You don't have to spend a lot of money on these guys. Of course, they're a great measuring bowl to have, but you can just go to your local B&M, Home Bargains. I'm just gonna grab what I use. So I've got two different bowls. So I've got a small blue one. You can just see on the camera. This is mainly from a smaller fish close inspection of, of fish. This cost me about 30 quid to be fair. But then I've also got a bigger one from a big fish, which I just got from B&M. And this one is a seven centimeter length bowl. So my big fish, although I do need to get a bigger one now because my big Magoi is actually now bigger than this bowl. So it doesn't, doesn't stretch out enough. Um, I've actually put my own measuring tape in there as well. Um, but yeah, this just cost a few quid from somewhere like B&M. Like I say, you don't have to go and spend a fortune. But when you are inspecting your fish, of, of course you're netting them out. If you need to do salt baths, anything like that, or isolate your fish for whatever reason. Measuring fish. It is great though for when you're sedating fish. If you're going that far, 
to administer topical treatments a good good bowl is something essentially you should have by the side of your pond and guys with the salt as well if you're doing things like salt baths or putting salt into your water make sure it's salt that's suitable for koi no table salt has to be cooking salt great for salt baths when you're treating koi for ulcers and wounds great for infection your koi is stressed a salt bath is perfect i've treated lots of my koi with salt baths more than the things like topical treatments and it's healed them up a lot faster than having to net them out every so many days and putting topical treatments on salt baths highly recommend them again i can do another future video on salt baths on using salt in your pond and on fish at a later date so that brings me on to a decent medical kit now I'll go through my medical kit. So mine I've actually all boxed up. All my medicines are together. So we can go through exactly what I have. Probably, again, fundamental things you should have in any medical kit. Again, with Christmas around the corner, these are great gifts to ask for uh, if people are asking you what to get you for Christmas. Um, I use the Chisori one. I think it cost about 50 quid to be fair, but again, someone actually got me, got me this for Christmas, but I actually, I actually asked for. And the good thing about the Cassiori kit, it comes with your Rocco wound cleaner to clean out the wounds with. You've got the Koi sedate if you're sedating the fish to administer anything you need to administer on the fish. It comes with the top coat sealer, obviously to seal in any wounds and ulcers. Um, Anti-back spray. Um, again, great for wounds, ulcers, stop any infection. And then it also comes with the Aura adhesive protective powder. So once you've administered all your topical treatments, you've cleaned it, you've had the antibac, you put the topical treatment on, put the powder on, water sealant um, on the wound and, and your ulcers. A great, great bit of kit. Also comes with a pair of gloves as well. I've got a box full here. Just your normal surgical gloves. A great thing to have on side as well is cotton buds to help with your cleaning. Cotton wool, again, to help cleaning. Um, I do have another ulcer swab to go along with my Cassiori kit. Towel, Pacific Koi towels in there. Get it damp, get it wrapped around the Koi. Cover the faces and things like that when you administer whatever you're administering. Sterilised scissors. Um, they're not in the box, I don't know why I've not put them in the box, but also tweezers. If you need to tweak out any dead scales, um, lice for example, if your fish have got lice, which you can actually see. Good pair of sterilised scissors and tweezers, it's a good thing to have. Um, and what's obviously then my tablets for my chlorine, testing chlorine in the water. And of course, clove oil. Clove oil is great for sedating koi. If you do need to euthanise koi, it's a much humane, humane way of doing it. Incidentally, if you want to go and see a video of how to humanely euthanise a koi, using clove oil. I've got a video on that. I'll put the link up at the top. I did it for another channel before we had this one. So great video on that. Another great thing to have to go alongside your medical kit is a baby changing mat. So if you took the koi out of the pond, you've sedated it, you're putting the topical treatment on, you can lie flat on a baby changing mat, much more comfortable for the koi. If it's still moving about, it's not going to injure itself. Um, you can make it damp as well, you won't have to wrap it around with a towel because it won't strip any of the mucus off like a towel could. So a baby mat is really um, ideal for when you're putting your topical treatment on your koi. Doing anything with your koi basically once it's out of the pond. Um, again, just make sure it's clean. And that also brings me on to having a spare air pump. So, I'll show you mine again. Now, every koi keeper should have an air pump in the pond anyway. Every koi needs oxygen. But as a spare, it doesn't have to be a massive air pump as your spare. You can just have a very small one. All it has is two air stones on the end. This comes in handy with me. If I've had to isolate a fish, if I've sedated it, if I'm salt bathing it, for example, um, I always use this because the fish is in the bowl, an air stone in for the oxygen, and it does come in handy to have as a spare. Like I say, you don't have to go for a big air pump, air pump for a spare, you can use a small aquarium one. But again, this is this is just a cheap, doesn't cost the earth, two air stones, ideal for things like when your fish uh, are bowled up or in case of an emergency. Of course, if your air pump packed up in the height of summer, you've got to administer quick oxygen into the pond. 
and even a small thing like this will massively massively help your koi and relieve a bit of stress on yourself at the same time. The next bit of equipment I probably recommend, well essentially to have, is dechlorination. So of course a lot of people will go for your big blues, uh, there's the three stage dechlorinators. Me personally use the one from Evolution Aqua. Which is this one. You can get bigger than these, but I mean for the size of my pond this is ideal. Uh, this actually treats 220,000 litres I believe. 225,000 litres, post pipe on the end, um, run it slow, straight through the carbon filter, it's a great chlorine removal. Um, not everyone treats their pond, I know koi keepers myself that top up their pond, water changes and they don't even dechlorinate it, it's not something I recommend but there is people out there that do it, but again if you don't want to go and spend any money on the big dechlorinators, even just having liquid at, at hand. Again, I keep the liquid. This is the Cotney Koi dechlorinator. More cost effective to get your carbon filters in the long run, but I'd always make sure you've at least got a bottle of liquid to hand at the same time. And of course, another way of moving chlorine from the pond is using sodium fire sulfate. Make sure I get it worded right, I can never pronounce it properly. But sodium fire sulfate, you mix, you put in your pond, and it strips all the chlorine out your water. Although I believe it doesn't relieve chloramines from your water, just chlorine. But again, very, very handy, very handy to have. Um, while we're on equipment, and of course, um, we went through all the medical side of it, to go along with that is a decent microscope. I, I get, not, not everyone is gonna be comfortable doing fish scrapes. To be fair, when I first started out, I was no way comfortable doing fish scrapes. But, if you see your fish flashing, or there's issues, you need to do a scrape. You can't get hold of a koi dealer or anything like that. Having a good microscope to hand and learning how to do scrapes yourself would come in handy. Now guys, these do not have to cost the earth, believe me. This was a less than £100 this. As long as you've got the proper objectives on there, 100 times, 400 times, enough to see things like costier, which you do need a bit of a magnification on, and to identify your paras parasites, it doesn't have to cost the earth, mine doesn't cost the earth, but it does the job, and it's saved me, it saved me a lot of hassle in the, in the long term, when I've noticed parasites in the pond, at least you know what you're treating, you don't just want to get some random off the shelf parasite liquid, chuck it in your pond if you don't know what you're treating for. You can just gonna cause yourself more is issues. And yes, and like I say, I get it, if you're not comfortable doing scrapes yourself, but if you can't get hold of your koi dealer or if you've got a relative or a friend that does have a microscope and you normally use their advice, and they're not available, they're away on holiday, having one yourself. And I'm, I'll do a separate video at some point as well about doing how to do scrapes to go along with this but it is really really a good piece of equipment and every core keeper i think should have one of these again christmas is around the corner guys get it on your christmas list so that brings me on to something else essential a core keeper should have really probably to go along with the microscope because if you don't have your own microscope and you need to go and get a scrape done a contact list and top of that contact list i think needs to be your local koi dealer build a relationship with your local koi dealer if he gives you his personal number, brilliant. If it's just the number for the shop, brilliant. But in case of emergencies, even just advice, again, scrapes, parasites, illnesses, your local koi dealer will be at hand. And, and to be fair, most of them are not going to be bothered by a phone call um, in, case, in terms of emergencies and things like that. But also on your, on your contact list, friends, family that have koi, um, Relatives for people that's looking after your pond, again if you're on holiday, the, you know, if you're in a koi club I'm sure you're going to have a few contact numbers anyway, a few different numbers on there for advice, you might have an expertise in parasites, you might be in different contact who's got expertise in illnesses, you might have a, someone who's got an expertise in, in something else, a few numbers and names on a contact list ready to hand, keep it with you. 
So guys, that's about it. Um, like I said, I've not really put them in any particular order. I just feel that these are fundamental items that any serious cord keeper should have to hand. I'm sure I've probably missed a few that you guys recommend, so please put them in the comments. Go for it. Um, there might be a few things that you guys don't have and don't need, but again, this is from my personal experience. This is just what my view that any cord keeper should have. So if you do like that video and you value my channel, please make sure you do give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're not subscribed already. Plenty of videos on my channel, mostly vlogs, what I do on the pond, um, pond upgrades and things like that. Comment down below if there's any information videos you'd like me to try and do in the future as well. And thank you very much for watching this video and I shall see you hopefully for another video next time on Sharpest Pond World. Cheers, ducks. Bye.